This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. It's time for the JJO Bang. Morning Show 640 Sex Fix. Bang. Talk dirty to me. Bang. Please. Gark. Brought to you by Beach House Lashes. Go to beachhouselashes.com. Get them brows, dude. Get them lashes lifted. Look at my lashes. They're so long. Do they even want our uh, plug? They're natural. I don't, they're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> she walks in, give them my free brows. They're like, what? Who are you? We don't even know who you are. It's like me just picking a client out of thin air. <laughs> Hey, uh, today's uh, sex fix brought to you by Ferrari. Hey, give me a Ferrari. If we're doing that, I'm going to be Mount Vernon Tap. Oh. <laughs> Go there and get some freeze up. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, duly noted. All right, uh, Amanda. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's give Aaron Rodgers a break, guys, and uh, talk about um, some real drama, please. <laughs> right, I would love an Aaron Rodgers break. Try me. <laughs> Try me. I've got a son who's 21. Okay. Lives at home. You know, we won't talk about that. He when you say, issue, but you know, he's, uh, wait, 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 wait. You say a good home. Do you mean your home? Yeah, she said, yeah, it's home. my home. Oh, okay, good. Oh, yeah. Just want to make sure that's yeah. clear. Well, so the problem here in life is that he's dating a 56 year old. Yeah. Shake him, uh, mama. Shake him, mama. No, she this out. is strange. How does she? <laughs> how does she look? Have, have you met her? Uh I met her briefly. She came by the other day. Was in the car. No, they were leaving to go somewhere, and she waved. She didn't no, <laughs> she waved. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she knows. Oh, yeah, she, she knows. knows. The, the very disapproving uh, mother. Yeah, she knows. Years. Well. <laughs> It's just awkward. I mean, yeah. it sounds like she's got a good job. She's some manager, you know, in one of the insurance companies and all that creepy stuff. Really? So, and legit. I mean, I don't think it was like a a Tinder hookup or something like that. They said they met at a Mallards you're, game, so it seems innocent. Your problem but. is, here's your problem. Here's <laughs> all of your problems. Uh, they're not breaking the law. Um, he's 21. And <laughs> if it's mutual... Uh, you're uh, SOL, as we say in the business. <laughs> well, what do I do about this? This is strange. Well, you Can get a, she help him house. get a job? Uh, <laughs> number one. Use her as a recruiter. That's what you can do. No kidding, dude. <laughs> he's going to have Benny's. He's going to have a 401k. And uh, he's going to move out of your basement. Yeah, first thing, we need to get you a good insurance yeah. plan. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. I'm I'm screwing your son, and also well, you need some term life insurance. Right. I yeah, have to right. say, she's gonna be the hard sell. Let's get that deductible yeah. down. Whoa! You're like hell yeah, take my kid, take him. So uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the little bird is flying away. What uh, uh what does I, he do? I, what does he do? Yeah, does he do anything? He, he right now he's a mechanic at one of the local places. Oh, so, okay. I mean, it's, you know, he's real okay. good. He's handy. Local he's really place, smart, she's been very vague. The kid needs to, good. you know, sort of kind of move on. I love I love having him nearby. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. Well, how do you know if she's... And not while he's dating this old Listen, woman. <laughs> there's an old saying. Hold your uh, enemies close. Your friend's close, but your enemy's closer. So that way you know if she's, like, brainwashing him or whatever. She's weird stuff she's oh. into. So you're going to be, you know, you're going to have a voice in it. Because if you just say, screw you, boom, they're gone. And Maybe gonna... he just likes older broads. Dude. Dude. Yeah, but don't you think she should at least, you know, make an effort to come say hi? Or Do you know. It's got to be awkward for her, too. I mean, we're about the same age. Do you... <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, you guys could. <laughs> you know, you, do you ever. Besties. When you were in school, high school, junior high, were, were you ever attracted to a male teacher when you were in high school? Because we had a uh, <laughs> our biology teacher, uh, Ms. Barry, and yeah. I emphasize the Ms. Barry part because I think she was sleeping with one of the football players. Oof, duck. Hose hound, a real hose hound. Yeah, dude. that's not good. But I mean, it's that older lady thing, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, is a thing that college professor thing, you know? 
Right. And the heart wants what the heart wants, my friend. You know, I. So it's a little different because he's 21, but you think about like Mary Kay Letourneau and that kid, Mm -hmm. which grew into an adult and they were together for a very long time, even after that. Um, And that's, I mean, there's a lot of other examples out there too. It could just be that he, I mean, girls and women in their 20s, dating women in their 20s where they're still trying to get their career and they're, you know, they're probably not as focused on dating because Mm -hmm. they're trying to get ahead and they have these goals. They're very goal oriented. He's probably with her being established and having a career, she's able to be super attentive to him. I'm sure that's probably Mm -hmm. part of it. Is she attractive? Some older women, I was going to just say are less picky. I don't, I don't know if that's fair. I'm not being, trying to be a dick about it, but. Like I said, I mean, I, I just saw her, like, sort of kind of head up kind of thing in the car. I didn't even see her. I haven't Weird. seen any pictures of her. I wonder why she didn't yeah. come in. Why Why didn't she come in? I don't know. My guess is she's a little embarrassed. Weird. So Creepy. It's kind of kind of. Well, who knows what he together. said? I don't know. <laughs> what if he you said know, something you know to what? her? I wish for once in life a successful, well-dressed woman would drive up, pick up her date, her young date, in a van that said free candy. Why is it always got to be guys? <laughs> Why can't it be the other way around? That's well, we're gonna. End, that's a long conversation, John. <laughs> I've got all day. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't you don't so have. What do you think I should do? Not talk to him? I'm like, what do I? What do I do? There ain't nothing you can do. I would ask to meet her. Be like, hey, why don't you bring, you know, the old crotch over for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. I think the whole age thing's kind of actually. And then serve her all pureed food. Oh, good. <laughs> Here's your baby formula. <laughs> that is funny. So bad. I think that thing's kind of going away, that whole st- yeah, stigma of, it is. of age. I don't know. It's just you a, have to meet her. It's just a number. You got to yeah. meet her. That's step one, because otherwise you're going to keep creating weird scenarios in your head. <laughs> <laughs> like we do. Who's that? Yeah, Who's that exactly. uh, recent thing where you said uh, you knew she really loved, and he was like the crypt keeper dude. Uh, do you know who I'm talking oh, about? Well, we were talking about Anna Nicole Smith. No, and... it was somebody else, not Anna Nicole Smith. And you said, "No, no, I know for a f- oh, maybe it was Anna Nicole Smith." Yeah. You, and you, you are, you are without a doubt certain she was in love with that dude. Dude, yeah. And he was in love with her, but she was also a very damaged person. <clears throat> Daddy but issues. She, I mean, I don't know that she was in love with him. I know she loved him. She definitely cared about that did, individual deeply. Did you love your son? Did you guys have a good relationship? No mommy issues? Yeah, no. I think we were fine. All right. He just kept to himself. He was yeah. quiet. So he, you, can't, yeah. you, you can't dictate attraction. Right. You can't. Yep, you got to have her over for dinner or something. That's the X factor, and absolutely. Then, and then d- there's nothing you can do. You got to let it play out. And the weirder you are about it, the more desirable she's going to become. So if you want to maintain a relationship with your your adult child, you you need to just take a back seat. I do understand he's living in your house and you should have to obey some sort of rules or at least <laughs> be paying some kind of rent. Uh, but yeah, well, I mean, he's paid a little bit of rent, but like, I just don't want her coming over at night and sleeping over and Good. waking up and having she and I having coffee with coffee right. Mate. And you know. are you are allowed to draw that boundary one hundred. Like, oh my god, your hot son is so good in bed. Oh my god, he must get it from his father. God, she comes out wearing one of his shirts. Oh my god, giant nipple sticking out. Yeah, like meow. tits sagging come, on the ground. Come in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Now all of a sudden you're making out with her. Oh my god! Excellent. Maybe you had mommy issues. I don't know. I don't know. I I would let it play. I would not. Yeah. Man, that's the. I would not get in between that. No. Nope. That's so weird. Just, you draw that boundary. Be like, just so we have some rules here. I'm. I don't. I'm. Don't want any. You know, overnights. Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. You can go over to her house for that. But uh, yeah. Th- and then you gotta let it go. You have to. And B is just. Be nice. Be super nice. 
<laughs> okay. I know. It's the worst. It's the worst. Uh, at least and it's not And then you can a... be a dick when you close the bedroom door and you're right. bitching to your husband about it. That's when you get to be a real ass. And say at least it's not a daughter dating a guy who, when she's yeah. not looking, could be hitting on you. Right. I mean, yes. then it could be. Yeah. This is less messy, it feels like. Right. Well, my husband like could care less about this. He's just laughing. Oh, he's oh, yeah, sure. Play out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is awkward. This is strange. <laughs> it's like whatever. Yeah. Yep. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got that a gr- sounds about right. Got a great job and a career. I mean, that's half the battle, right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'd let it play. Yep. And what's the harm? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's not like he's going to get her pregnant, so you ain't got to worry about being stuck <laughs> with her forever. You know. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, as, lo- a lot. as long as it no- is a lot. As long as nothing. Well, sh- she'll probably buy him clothes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, it could be worse. Yeah, too. it could be a lot worse. I mean, he could be dating somebody that is sucking all of his resources right. or they, and energy. In. Or they'd have to move in with you, and the other person could have kids. I right. Mean, everything could be worse. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you might have hit the jackpot. Yeah. Here. And. Oh, you may be denied a grandchild, though. Oh, oh that's the right. only, yeah. That's the only problem. Yeah. That's, I don't know how you feel about that. I need me a baby, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's getting too big to cuddle. <laughs> I need me a baby. <laughs> All yeah, right. I can roll with that. Like well, just, I've got a daughter, but... Uh, oh, just be bad. happy for him. I got a daughter, but... Uh, <laughs> she goes. <laughs> <laughs> And, I love you. And, and you know what? I will also say she may just want to, and I don't mean to be, uh, you know, say this out loud. She may just want to bang your son. Yeah. I mean, it might be a thing where she's just older and just is there for the sex. Yeah, but just not in my house. Well, You're right. right. Totally. Right. You know those, you know those make-out parties? You know those make-out parties I used God, to do? Yeah. Boom. It's so weird. Except it's just your kid down there making out. No. No, mm. you can be, yeah, draw that boundary so you never have to worry about it and then move on from there. But you have, to, over. you have to make your mistakes to know where you're going, though. You mm-hmm. have to let somebody make mistakes. Yeah. As long as they're not like heroin mistakes. I think it's great. He's probably, I do too. She's probably taking him out to fancy dinner. I think it's and, hot as hell. Yeah. I do. That's good. Yep. You let us, okay. yeah, you, you worry about it. We'll just sit back and give you the, and the other flip side of that coin is, He's growing and learning, mm-hmm. and it's kind of hot. And uh, she's probably making great <laughs> coin. Right. I doubt it's going to last forever, but right, I right. guarantee you he's going to look back on that dating experience and be like, that was pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. A learning experience. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's not <laughs> 15. You'll be all right. All right. You're, you're, you're nice. Okay. You're a very nice parent. Yep. But you got to get over the awkwardness for sure. Make her feel welcome and take it from there. I guess. I guess I should take the first step and just fill it. Mm -hmm. She's not making an effort, so. Right. She probably feels a certain way. Right. She she feels like she's being. Right. She's doing something wrong. And who knows if he was like, my mom feels weird about it. And let's just, you know, who knows what he said to her. So Uh, you definitely got to make the first step. Imagine her taking the 21-year-old over to her parents. If in they're the nursing alive. home? Yeah, the nursing home. If they're alive. <laughs> I'm just saying, if they're alive. That's kind of that's kind of weird, too. That is weird. But uh, whatever, man. They just... See if it works. Okay. That's yeah. how we're all with it. The yeah. worst that can happen is uh, he gets uh, hitched to a well-off lady. Yeah. You can learn a lot listening to podcasts. And only three countries in the world don't use the metric system. Or you can listen to this one. I can't remember where I went Friday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What did I do on Friday? I got to check my calendar. (laughs) If anybody saw me Friday, call. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. I literally have no idea where I was Friday. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. Florida. But that's America's wing. These are the people who warm up through the markdowns and rollbacks and shopping carts. These are the people who warm up where we save money, shop smart, only at Walmart. Okay, so you know it's going to be a good story when we combine Florida and Walmart, right? 
Uh, here we go. Until police dealing with a mess after they say someone stole an excavator and rode it around before driving it through the wall hey. of a Walmart. Police also say that same suspect drove it into the wall of a storage unit. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Police say the suspect is in custody. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Just stole an excavator and ran it into a Walmart. Good God. <laughs> you think you'd uh, very slowly see that coming. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, stop. Uh, the suspect later identified as 47-year-old Jesse Charles Smith um, stole that excavator and uh, was taken out nearby power poles along the way. Uh, yeah, he was very busy. I cannot believe nobody has heard, especially with the power pole thing happening. But he's got a bunch of charges coming at him. Grand theft. Trespassing, uh, damaged property, criminal mischief, all that stuff. Like so, he destroyed it right in front of us. He just destroyed <laughs> the whole building. How you steal an excavator? Do they have keys in them? That's incredible. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe they were like building a Texas roadhouse in the parking lot, and they had it sitting over the other side of the yeah, parking lot. But I don't you... think he took it there and unloaded it. Right. Yeah. That's he's... very specific. Right. But uh, as a construction person... D- do you remove the keys from everything you know, like, are at you night? On, on the a hook? I yeah. Think I think you're in charge of your own excavator, aren't yeah. you? I have to ask an excavator. Yeah. Excavator guy. I know. And excavator appears to get harder to say the more you say it. Uh, excavator, excavator, <laughs> excavator. <laughs> yeah, you have to be. Something short circuits in my brain there. Fire that C off there. <laughs> it's, a hard, it's a very hard C, or you look like an idiot. Okay, more from Florida. Oh, weird. Somebody, yeah, who collects the keys? Yeah. Uh, because I know there's a lot of theft at job sites and stuff, but, I, you know, you think that's tools. And maybe, right, and maybe trailers. Maybe skid steer, a trailer full of tools, right, you know, right. easy to hook up and drive up on an excavator. Right. Who's that? Where's that guy? Or, like, you know, like, sometimes they will see, like, the bobcats in there or whatever, and I always just assume that they take the keys out or have some sort of, I don't know, way for you to not steal them. I know when you rent a Sunbelt rental, because I was there for the customer appreciation party, everybody. That's right. Guy was up at a man lift. I pussied out. I stopped after about 40 feet. Yeah, that's high. Uh, what was I going to say? So you have to take insurance out on those, like yeah. those man lifts? Yeah. Or whatever, all that equipment. I cannot believe I told those guys they give uh, that to normal, regular people that have never operated heavy I know. Isn't that weird? <laughs> It's like, and they can buy Tannerite. Weird. Uh, right. Like. <laughs> right. Uh, but they, uh, you have to take insurance out on that. I think they had a guy, a tree fell on a man lift, some guy. Right. Took. And it would have been like $150,000 in damage, but he had a, he took out the, the little personal policy. Yeah. So it saved his ass. No kidding. And you have to. That equipment is expensive, So dude. expensive. I mean. We have people calling in. Maybe they oh, know. Right. What do they want to talk about Aaron Rodgers? No. <sighs> Good morning. Yeah, I would guess that 60% of excavators have a key in them. <gasps> I'll bet you most of them have a key. They're hidden or they're, they're like we put them in the, oh. the cup holder over the or vi- we leave it right in it. Over the visor. Oh, no. <laughs> like <Yep>. old school. <laughs> so you can you could pretty much jump into any one of them. I'll bet you. Well, I, I, <laughs> you could start them up. Well, that, is that because oh, no. isn't that because most job sites have like a security guy camped out there in his truck overnight? Yeah, yeah, yeah and you got to have a hard hat so the bad guy wouldn't go in there if they didn't have a hard hat. Well, of right? course, of course. <laughs> oh no, I can't. I'm in there. I'm in there in my flip flops at a Fendor construction <laughs> site, going, "Hey, just checking doors, pulling door handles." You blend, dude. It's fine. I mean, taking a joyride in an excavator. Right. I want to know how he got it to the Walmart. Well, it had to it be had to have, They had to have been doing work. Yeah. Because you're not going to... It's nighttime. Right. If you're driving an excavator any sort of distance, somebody's going to be like, hey, there's something fishy going was it, on. Was he like trying to use it? Uh, did, I, did I miss it? Was he trying to... Bre- he, he used it to break in to steal stuff? He was just... No. He's, he was just being... Gotcha. Florida man. Yeah. Got it. So we, d- we don't know yet what set him off. But, yeah, he ran into a storage unit. He ran into power poles and into the Walmart. God, dude. He's very busy. Just do it like regular people. Just smack, run in, steal stuff, and run out. They won't stop you. Can't. It's Florida. I think you're overthinking the damn thing. Uh-huh, yeah. Hi, how's it going? Hey, John. 
Oh, Hi, Jerry. 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 Now, here's a guy that's been around some excavators. Yeah. They uh, have a kill switch. So there's a switch on the machine somewhere. I can't tell you. But uh, it shuts down everything. So no matter even if they leave the key in there or not, you won't if you don't know where that switch is, and it's usually really hard to find, and uh, uh, it just kills the whole machine. You can't start it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, joy. I'm trying to think of the last time we had a joy ride in an in an excavator. It's it's almost like a. Well, there was the Infinite's Bulldozer it's, it's, one. It's like a crime of opportunity. It's like you've been drinking. You're like, hey, you ever want to fire up an excavator? Let's yeah, give it a shot. You know, hey, I had a lot of chances to do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I never did that? No. No. Um, I was always a bobcat person, just mm-hmm. like D, you know. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, if you want to learn how to run a bobcat, just come to my house and I'll show you. Oh, here we go. Now I we're... could uh, teach my wife. I could teach you. Now we're getting into brand wars. I didn't know it was well, a thing. whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right, Jared. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, if you can get your hands on a caterpillar key, they'll pretty much start any caterpillar. Oh, here we go. Find yourself a cat key. It will start... I mean, from 20 years ago, I don't know about a brand new one, but I'm guessing, but they're all the same, every one. So I got one cat key, and it will start any cat that uses the key. That does not some maybe newer ones. seem like they're, a... They're not individually like a car. Right. You can, anyone, any cat key will start any cat. That's amazing. And even like a case bobcat key, a, a case skid steer key will start a bobcat. What? That's how similar they are. How yep. are we I, not I a, seeing more thefts? You would think. I'm shocked. I'm shocked because we leave keys and stuff, and I'm shocked more people don't just take joy rides in them. <laughs> right. Like even I'm just shocked. to f around. Right. Oh yep. my goodness. Yep. I've never seen, never had it happen in all the years. Well, so, I guess shocked, now people shocked. be like, hey. Yep. <laughs> they know. Yeah. yeah. You get a, a cat. Yeah, well, go, go over to Fabco or Fabic. And have a field day. Yeah, listen, listen to us telling teenagers how to commit crimes right on the radio. <laughs> this is great, dude. We're like, hey, this, dude, you know what's easier than lifting every, a Kia? Every every Findorf, every Findorf guy right now just smacked himself in the head going, what yeah. in the hell are, is that guy talking about? That's a lie. It's like, it's like you're not supposed to talk about the magician's trick. Yeah, exactly. I just exactly. gave, I just gave oh, away no. the biggest secret on earth. Reality radio <laughs> Sorry. to the rescue. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, man. Have a good day. Yep. Oh, no. That's going to be a wow. cr- crime wave across the city. <laughs> Uh, if there is, we're going to forget this break ever yeah, happened. We, okay. We just we report the news. We don't yeah. tell you how to commit crimes. Uh, all right, one more Florida story. A uh, 40-year-old dude named Armando Maciet arrested last week. He chased down a group of teens and pointed a gun at them. Oh. Now, that's pretty bad, but uh, we don't really know what set him off, but it's some kind of, sort of like road rage incident. Grandpa. Because <laughs> he aggressively chased their car in his truck. No. Oh. Forced them to turn down a dead end street. So now imagine being the group of teenagers. You're in a car. There's a giant truck chasing you, mad at you, and it's making you turn down this dead end street. And then he got out and confronted them with a gun. So that's some pretty terrifying stuff for people of any age, let alone teenagers. And that's when Armando noticed that one of the kids was his neighbor from across the street. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, oh, my bad, bro. That's a legit quote. Oh, my bad, bro. And then he Don't just tell your dad. went back to his truck and drove away. <laughs> Teenagers, you got to be up to no good. I know something's going on here. And the dang kids were driving to school. So when they got there, they were reported it to police. And he's got charges of resisting officers. So apparently the arrest did not go well either. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Wow. And some of the kids' parents are pressing charges, which they absolutely should, because that's a traumatizing event right there, having a gun pointed at you. So, um, yeah, Armando. On a roll. He taught them boys a lesson that day. Yeah, not sure what it was. 
Just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just Florida they, they, man they, be crazy. Yeah. They just happen to run across crazy. Yeah. Amazing. Unbelievable. I, and what would have happened if that wasn't his neighbor across the street? Yeah. What was his uh, end game there? We, right. See, right. He's like, he's like yeah, teenagers. I ain't taking no chances. I'm just going to shoot him right now. Yeah. Just in case. Kids heading to school. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know, dude. It's so random. It is. People are crazy. Yeah. They're wound tight. Replay today, the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. JJO. I love cats. I love cats. I love every kind of cat. I just want to hug all of them, but I can't get on every cat. Get on every cat. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. I promise some cat chat. So, uh, here we go. Um, when, I mean, this is like story time here, everybody. Grab your 2% milk in your... Grab uh, a gummy and kick back. Your blue mat and maybe, maybe uh, workman's relief and have yourself a morning. Uh, when Miranda adopted a 20-year-old cat, she did not expect to be an owner for very long. But the feline has proved that age is just a damn number and has shocked millions of TikTok users, much to the owner's delight. Miranda has shared a montage of videos showcasing her pet's energetic outburst. Roxanne appears to be a cheeky cat who refuses to be defined by her age. Layered over a clip of Roxanne relaxing on a bed, Miranda admitted she thought Roxanne would pass away shortly after being adopted at 20 and a half years old. (laughs) (laughs) But but the following clips taken over the past 18 months show how mischievous Roxanne playing and helping herself to food and all that. Video caption, she just keeps on going, man, has racked up 4.7 million views. Um, according to Pet MD, the average lifespan for a cat is around 13 to 14 years. Oh, it's depressing. Yeah. Uh, which I guess that makes sense. America died when she was 12, so. Um, Get in the cooler. <laughs> Get in the cooler. She just she goes, all right. I knew this was coming. That's what they're going to say to me at the home someday. You're going to... Bring in a 60-quart cooler. I'm like, oh, that's, I got about a week. It's time now. It's, it's time. Um, some felines have been known to live for over two decades. The oldest cat sure. ever. How yeah. long do you? How old do you think the oldest oh, cat man. ever was? That's a good question. Yeah. It's 30 plus? Uh, so the oldest cat ever, named Cream Puff, was born in 1967 and lived to be 38 years old. God, that's amazing. Dying in 2005. And they're so chill. They just value the warmth and comfort. They just... It's so cool. Right. Kind of well, like Greg now. He just gets under an, a blanket and we don't see him for days. <laughs> They're making biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Cream Puff's owner, Jake Perry from Austin, Texas, was also the owner of the previous record holder, Grandpa Rex Allen, who lived to be 34 years old. Well, what is Jake Perry doing to keep his cats living that long? Now, Marina encourages people to adopt a senior cat, which could be any feline over the age of 10 years old. Pet MD states that mature cats aged 6 to 10 uh, tend to slow down and lead a sedentary lifestyle. But it doesn't seem to be the case with the cat that Miranda adopted, who is now 22. Wow. Yeah. So there you go. That'd be a good way to adopt. I mean, you know, if you don't want the the, the crazy, the zoomy, the the nutball, crazy cat, kitten lifestyle. Yeah. You know, tearing up your furniture and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't know. I was thinking about this the other day because a friend of mine got a puppy. And Oof. then another friend had a baby. And I was like, no. Oof. I don't even think I could do a kitten. Allergies and poofy diapers. At the same time. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. It's a lot. Yep. Uh, anywho, so there you go. Uh, I love that uh, we're focusing on, I feel like focusing on senior animals is a kind of a newer thing that's happening. Sure. Which is awesome. Um, well, but, and they probably deserve it. I mean, who knows what the hell they went through to get yeah. where they are. I mean, I know. you know, just give them a nice place to stay warm. And I would foster, but God, I'd probably end up with 19 cats. Yeah, my friends Patty and Dot, local Jeffco Lesbos, love them. Oh, uh, hello. They are, uh, we call them foster failures. Yeah. Because they have five dogs now. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, <laughs> they've got their whole little pack of dogs. Uh, 
Uh, but I am in the same boat you are. I do not know that I could foster an animal. Just like there's people that'll like they'll buy a project horse and train it and then sell it. Right. And I was like, I don't know that I could do that because you don't know where it's going to end up. Correct. You know. Yeah. Well, old cats, they sleep a lot. They're affectionate. I mean, there's a lot to like there. Yeah. You know? For sure. Like if Sharon left Greg and I took Greg in, he'd probably sleep like half the day. I wouldn't even know he was in the basement. Yeah. I wouldn't even worry about it. Well, you got to like wash his sweatpants. And, Ooh. You know. Ooh. See, no sweatpants. Those have been around since uh, the 90s. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah. I don't know. And get them... You don't want females. Wait, no, you want males together, right? You want males together. Isn't that the way it goes? Uh, Female cats are territorial and, and I don't know, unless they're raised young, I think, together. Yeah, I don't There's know. There's a formula there to make that work. Yeah. But anyways. If I had money, that's the animal sanctuary I would do. Anyway, I could like a couple of Jeff Co. Old animals. A couple of Jeff Co. Lesbos. Yeah. Put them in the same room together. It's going to be a drama. It's territorial. Territorial. I seen you first. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, go to my safe place. Go to my safe place. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Kittens are kittens are fun. Uh, I've had both now. Uh, Nash was a trip, man. He's uh, he's been fun to watch though. Growing up, what is he three now? I mean, he's he's yeah. been a blast watching him grow up. Yeah. He's still a little crazy, but it's less crazy episodes now. So he's kind of, Aspen puts him in his place. Yeah. We had, we got two new kittens at the farm. I think it was last summer they were kittens. Kitten energy is and, insane, though. Yeah, and Beans is still, like, the other day I was just standing there talking to somebody, and he walked right up to me and jumped onto my boobs. Oh, no. Yeah, and I was like, bro, aren't we a little old to be doing that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> But he's still got that crazy kitten energy. He likes a couple of companions, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like, let me get on them pillows. No, 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 no kitty companion. I know what I it's want. Like, I'm going to make biscuits right here, bitch. Oh, man. But uh, but I can tell you getting a kitten in Aspen's older, it went well. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, I mean, did, did Nash torment uh, Ass Man? Yeah, a lot. Um, but they, they've really come together. Yeah. They're great. And it was been fun to watch. Well, so, and I know. Don't e be afraid to do. Even mama kitties get irritated with kitten energy. Oh, absolutely. You know, they'll yeah. be like, dude, chill. But, yeah. Um, consider a senior animal. There you go. Absolutely. Highly recommend. Dumbing down your smartphone. One podcast at a time. Listen, rate, and subscribe to the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up. With Johnny and D, JJO. This is crazy. After almost a month of searching, a dog owner can finally rest after a missing dog was found safely at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson Airport over the weekend. It was lost at the airport, which is considered like the busiest in the world, right? So I have the uh, the dog's owner, Paula, and then the lost pet recovery specialist, Robin Allgood. I love that her name, her last name's Allgood. It's all bad. This is all good. <laughs> Talking about recovering the dog. Give me PC2. A month of missing, right? I was crying. I was having panic attacks on the plane. I got up to her, and she still hadn't turned around and looked at me. And so I just took a deep breath, and I thought, you know what? It's now or never. And I just reached up with both hands and just grabbed around her waist, and she just relaxed into my hands. Uh, I'll give you something to relax in your hands Whoa. Later. No. Um, so yeah, a six year old dog, Maya, uh, was lost in August at the airport. <laughs> that seemed possible. I know. So the airport's operation team found Maya hiding near the no, North Cargo facilities. It's it's not surprising they found it. It's amazing it's alive when they found yeah. it. Yeah. It's hard to believe. So for a month, what the hell was it doing? Like no water? You think you would have heard it or smelled it or right. whatever? On August 18th, Rodriguez and Maya embarked on a journey from their home in the Dominican Republic to California for a two-week vacation. Leave your dog at home. Yeah, yeah, stop taking your animals. 
when they arrived in Atlanta for a layover. <laughs> Who would put their in, in, in cargo? Was that dog in cargo? Rodriguez was informed by Border Patrol staff Ooh. that her tourist visa did not meet the necessary requirements. Bow, bow, bow. They canceled her visa and told her she would have to return home on the next flight. With the next flight to Punicana scheduled for the following day, Rodriguez faced the distressing reality of spending the night alone in a detention center separated <laughs> from her beloved oh, no. canine companion that she should have left at home. <laughs> she should have left at home. <laughs> yeah, freaking idiot. Uh, anyway, uh, the next day, Rodriguez arrived at her flight skate early, uh, awaiting her reunion with the dog. And to her dismay, the dog never arrived. Sure. Unable to remain in the United States for over 24 hours without a visa, Rodriguez was left with no choice but to board her flight to Punicana without Maya, an experience Whoa. she said triggered a panic attack oh, sure. during her journey home. I don't go anywhere without her. You should consider it. Um, she's so well behaved, I take her to restaurants literally everywhere. Now, you didn't answer my question. Was the dog put in cargo? I don't know where. The, I don't think they can put the dogs in cargo because there ain't no oxygen. That's down there. why I'm. I'm yeah. Okay, just to be sure. No. Two days after Maya went missing, a Delta rep contacted Rodriguez to share unfortunate news. He said that she was being transported to the plane on the runway and staff had opened her kennel and she somehow <laughs> escaped into the middle of the runway. <laughs> So weeks went by without receiving any new information. I'm sure she probably assumed her dog was long gone. Uh, Delta team has been working to locate and reunite this pet with a customer, and we remain in touch with the customer to provide updates. Delta people feel deeply concerned for the customer and the dog, and we're committed to ongoing search efforts, working closely with the city of Atlanta, Department of Aviation, and other stakeholders. Now, uh, with the cancellation of her tourist visa, Rodriguez sent her mom to Atlanta to join the search efforts in the vast 4,000 acres of the airport. Rodriguez shared the agonizing toll that Maya's disappearance had taken, describing her experience as living a nightmare. So, yeah, there you go. They found her uh, three weeks after she was lost. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And it got loose. It's mm -hmm. running around the... <laughs> the 4,000 acres by the uh, airport. Uh, what country? It doesn't look like home. <laughs> what the... Very humid here. Right. Not, not enjoying it. <laughs> Very not, humid. Not enjoying it. No bitches to hang out with. Oh, man. I, you know, so you got jet noise going. Yeah. <laughs> Dog. I'm shocked it didn't have a heart attack. Right. That's amazing. Some trauma there. I'm trying to think if my cat got out of its cage in the middle of the Punicana airport. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah. Uh, I would, uh, A, never do that to my animal. I'm just saying this is me. I would never, unless it was in my lap, I would travel with it. I mean, sure. Okay, fine. Um, and if I had to travel or I was moving, I would drive that damn thing across the country. That's what I'm saying. Before I'd ever, you know, trust it. Especially to a foreign country. That's, you know, that's where you've got problems. Uh, yeah. Well, that's where you, there are so many other factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out um, of your control. Right. My dog is just such a lunatic. I don't... I wouldn't put the airport staff through. <laughs> yeah, so he'd have to sedate Chewy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He'd definitely have to be drugged. Man, or he, oh, the whole plane would be filled with drool, you know? I really hope they don't put those animals in cargo. I don't think they they can't put them in cargo because there's no oxygen. Well, I'm saying, what if you're traveling with a St. Bernard? Where are you going to put it? They, pr they have an area. I'm pretty sure there's an area. Like when somebody's got a, like a pony. Well, when you ship a horse and a plane, it's a whole different thing. No, a support pony. A, a, uh, no one's bringing a support pony. That's not true. That happens. A tiny little Shetland pony has been on an airplane. Not a Shetland, but a mini. A mini. Yeah, a mini. Man, oh, man. No one wants a Shetland as a support pony anyway. They're assholes. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. I've taken a dog on. I, I, I know what happens. I get it. I just would not do that for the well-being of my animal. Well, and this is a particular pet, case where I will judge this broad. Because you're going on a two-week vacation. Get a dog sitter. Agreed. You're Especially, you're vacationing out of the country. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Just get a dog sitter. Let your dog play with other dogs for a while. And, and by Go the way, enjoy your vacation because you're, you need to prioritize an animal's safety. And you can't. Right. You're trusting other people. 
and all these processes if you're, to go correct. If my if the, if I knew the animal was going to be out of my sight for more than a minute, that that would be the end of me trying to fly with an animal. Right, right. There's no way. I, I wouldn't trust. I know. And it also gives you a good excuse not to go somewhere. Like, oh, we got to go to Aunt Erna's in Tampa to uh, visit for a week. Oh, she's a crazy one. Uh-huh. Sorry, my dog's got diarrhea. I can't come to Tampa. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, how's it going? Hey, so you guys are talking about uh, pets and stuff in the cargo hold. So, yes, they can. <gasps> what? I used to work at the Dane County Airport. No. So... When there's an animal in the cargo hold, the pilot has to be aware of it. So the pilots get like a big thing of paperwork that they type in all like their logs and stuff for autopilot and stuff like that for the flight. Right. Okay. And on there, on there, you have to disclose that there's a live animal in the plane. Then they can then pressurize oh. the back, the cargo hold. Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Yep. And then they can, so like if it's like a really long flight, like when I worked at Madison, we used to, there was a dog breeder that used to send dogs all over the country. And if they had like a layover flight, you'd leave a bag of food and stuff on top of the kennel. And at the layover, they would feed the dog they or the animal, whatever. They would let it out, go to the bathroom, and they'd put it back in, and then they would send it back on its way. See, that's where the problems start. Uh, yeah. Your animal is not baggage, asshole. Right. Hire a dog sitter. That's crazy. Oh, my God. We, we, get everything dogs cats we used to get a lot of sugar gliders like those things those are the most annoying things in the world you'd open the cargo hold and they were just making their goofy sound oh no oh my yeah wow well i'm sure because the pressure is pre- i mean i'm sure they're feeling effects of the different pressure and just like we do but yes yeah oh my god well thank you for that information i had no idea that they could pressurize and temperature control the yep, cargo only, hold. Only, only when needed. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Now, do you get a charge for that, or is that just something they can hit a switch and it happens? No big deal. Uh, I don't know that whole thing. I know you probably, I'm sure you probably pay a pretty significant amount for sending some sort of live animal uh-huh. on a plane by itself, like those dog breeders. I don't know what they what they would pay for something like that but i think the like you said i think the pilot just presses a button or does something in his computer and it pressurizes the cargo hold okay we learn something new every damn day was her problem the dog's papers or her papers it's her paper it was her that was the problem all right Mm -hmm. i thought it was the vaccination thing no it was her for the animal uh all right man uh what airline were you with I worked for United in Madison. For United, yeah, they do pretty good, right? And uh, why'd you get out of that racket? Didn't pay enough. a boy. Oh, you'd hate radio. Nah. <laughs> hey, did you get free flights? Doesn't that isn't that a good trade off? Um. So when I worked, I worked for Delta, or when I worked for DGS, so it was Delta Global Services, where they subcontracted for United. So yes, I could pay fifty dollars a year, and I could fly anywhere in the continental United, United States for free on non-rev. So I would just go up to a gate and say, hey, can I hop on this flight? Then an open seat, you could hop on. And then internationally, I could, if I wanted to, I could have flown to Europe for like 30 bucks. All you had to pay is the international tax. God, oh, my God. Sick, dude. And there's, pe- there's people that I worked with, they used to go to Europe and stuff all the time, even on like the other airlines like American and Delta. Right. They would they would hop in the planes and they would automatically get bumped up to first class or business class, so they're flying like high rollers all the way over overseas. That is kind of worth it. Could you do that as a part timer, or do you got to be a full timer to get that? Um, there were some part timers that did it just for the flight benefits. God, yeah. I might take Christy out. Maybe we'll throw some baggage around for a couple hours a day. <laughs> I mean, it's really not that hard when you think about it. You sit there, you load a plane every two hours, and right. then what do you do? You sit on your ass for the rest of the time. Right. <laughs> but somebody's got to do it. Right. That's amazing. Did you ever do it? Did you ever take advantage of it? Yeah, I flew to uh, – actually, I saw, like, myself when I was there. I was still younger and single, so um, I took my mom and I flew down to Florida. We took, like, a extended vacation down in uh, Siesta Key. We flew on there for free. Oh my god, and dude! We hopped, we hopped, up, we hopped on the first flight, and I said, "Hey, can we get on?" And I knew the gate agent because we hopped in in Madison, and the gate agent gave us both first ca- first class seats all the way to Atlanta. It's amazing. So oh, that's that was neat. so awesome. 
I would That's be fantastic. I would be known as the United Airline whore dude. Are you kidding me? They yeah, I and mean, then you can you can do like you can go into the computer work too, and you can kind of see what flights are available. Yeah. Like you can go into our our thing, and you can see what like seats are available on the flight. And you can kind of judge if you're going to get first class or not, depending on how full the plane is. God, why don't they put that in, a, in an advertisement when they're hiring? Right. Are you kidding me? Hey, we'll give you two bucks an hour. But for 30 bucks, you can fly to Europe. Done. The JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday, 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO.